And then I think about the power of the cross. Uh, Paul writing the letter to the Corinthian uh, church in 1 Corinthians, uh, uh, the first chapter, and it's the 17th verse, I believe. He said, but the preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that perish, but unto us that are saved, it is the power yes. of God. See, uh, the preaching of the cross. What is the cross? What does it represent? And how does it meaningfully play a part tonight in the overall gospel of Jesus Christ? Well, the cross is the intersection of God's will versus man's will. And the triumphant will of God overshadowing the weaker will of man. Yes. This is the cross. This is the intersection. The Roman cross was like this, yes. not like this. That's it. The, the Roman cross was not this. The Roman cross where Christ was crucified was this. Yes. And, uh, and it's the intersection of God's supernatural greater will versus the weaker fallen will of man. And man's will intersects God's will, and God's will becomes triumphant. God's will is above man's will. That's the preaching of the cross in my life and your life. And the preaching of the cross is foolishness. I'm not talking about the wooden cross that Jesus died upon. I'm talking about the figure of him coming against the powers of hell and the powers of Satan and intersecting himself with the weakness of fallen man with a triumphant uh, openness of the Son of God. Uh, he, he intersected the cripple, the lame, the halt. He intersected the blind. He intersected uh, harlotry and whoredom and prostitution and leprosy. He intersected uh, foolishness of man with the foolishness of the cross. Yes. Uh, because the cross was just as foolish, the preaching of it, the will of Christ above the will of man, the will of uh, Christ above the will of the flesh was just as foolish. The statement Jesus made to his disciples, the fishermen, when he gathered them from their boats and their nets and said, but come thou, leave the nets, leave the boats, and come thou and follow me, and I will make you fishermen of men. That is a foolish statement because it is foolish now to anybody that directly divests themselves of the material possessions of this earth and blindly trust God for God to prevail and empower them and provide for them. It is foolishness to say that to anybody. Leave what you have and come and follow the cross. Leave what you have and come and follow Christ. Leave what you have and come and follow the will of God in your life. That is foolishness because there's many things rise up in conflict against that. First of all, your strength. I don't have the strength. Sickness. I'm too sick. Um, I don't have enough monetary gain to follow Christ. I, I, I don't see all the plan. I'm not, everything's not mapped out for me. Uh, you're asking me to come thou and follow you, and I, you, you'll make me something. You'll, uh, you'll reinvest my life. You'll change me. You'll rearrange me. Uh, see, it's still just as foolish now to the man or woman that Christ says, come and follow me as it was at the preaching of the cross 2,000 years ago when Jesus intersected the fishermen and their boats and said, leave your boats and leave your nets. That was what they possessed. And you will value your possessions. A bird in hand is worth two in the bush. And that's why it's, trust, it's hard to have blind faith to let the gospel prevail over the material, to let the gospel prevail over what you see as an obstacle. Yes. Because uh, uh, you're going to tell God right away, I don't have, when God is saying, but I have. You know, you're, the intersection of Christ's will with your will is that you possess whatever you possess, uh, uh, more or less, uh, you know, whatever you have. But whatever you have, that's possession. That's like a person trusting God to give them victory where medicine is not prevailing or where drugs are not prevailing because it doesn't take long 
to entrench any given habit or possession in our life as a crutch or a leaning post or something that we can trust in, whether it's whatever it is, whether it's a house, a car, a clothing, uh, something in the bank, something uh, that we possess, something we have, anything material, uh, five acres, one acre, uh, a half an acre, uh, whatever we have, even though most of the time you never own anything in life, uh, through the powers of government, through the powers of taxation, through the powers that be of the world we live in, you never really own anything. You never really own or possess anything, but the very fact that your feet stand in it, and that you occupy a dimension in it, and that you have a place where you lie down and say it's mine, it, 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 it creates a false sense of, of security yes. in us to where it's very difficult for us to be intersected by the cross and the preaching of the cross. Amen. Praise the name Amen. of the Lord. It's very difficult. Those fishermen didn't have, maybe their boats were old, most fishermen's boats are. Maybe their boats needed scraping the barnacles off. Maybe the boats were not that big. Maybe the boats were small, I think they were. Yes. But they were still possessions, their only possessions right. that they could materially handle, they could materially get in, they could materially see, and when Christ simply walked up to them and said, come thou and follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. It was earth shaking. You say it was easy for them to do that. It isn't easy for you right now to turn loose sometimes an offering uh, that God says, give that. But you say, no, that's down to the last bottom of my pocketbook. I don't have much left in there. But God says, give that. But see, it's very hard because the intersection of the cross removes you from the material and takes you from that you can see and lay your hand upon and trust in and believe. And you say, I can't give God all of that time because I must uh, secure my life. I must secure me. I must make me secure. But Christ is saying to you, the preaching of the cross is indeed foolish to you. It's very foolish to you, but it's the wisdom and the power of God because Jesus was going to give them something greater than their material. He was going to give them something greater than the boat that would leak and the nets that had to be uh, mended. He was going to give them more than their material, but the material they could see. And they couldn't see what he promised them because he was talking about the kingdom of God. And they said, well, where's this kingdom? Where's this kingdom? And they were constantly harassing Jesus throughout his entire ministry. Uh, where's the kingdom of God? Uh, we, we want to see where this kingdom is. Lord, when thou comest into thy kingdom, will you make us rulers on the one hand and rulers on the other? They were always vying and jockeying for a position because their mind was in the material because the preaching of the cross and the church is the same way. We're in the same attitude today. We're in the same decision point. If you could move the church from their security in what they see and feel, though it's very little, but you, you have very little security in this world. The richest person in here, you're, what you have can be taken from you in a matter of days, in a matter of weeks. You can lose everything you have in the kind of world we live in. But yet it gives us a false sense of, of security. We believe that this is more important. This is greater. But the preaching of the cross is greater because the preaching of the cross intersects with your weak will and gives you a greater will to serve God and to walk with God and to trust in that which you cannot see, but you can feel. Praise the name of the Lord. And because you know it is there, because the scripture said the preaching of the cross, and so people get more and more involved in trying to secure uh, kin folks, positions, a family. Uh, they're afraid to offend a daughter or a son. They're afraid to offend a child. They're afraid to offend an aunt or an uncle. They're afraid to offend, uh, they're afraid to, uh, that their, their whole world is going to blow up. They're going to lose everything because what they're seeing is what they have, but they're not seeing what they don't have. But the scripture said, while we look not upon the things, give me that scripture in Corinthians, in Corinthians, while we look not upon the things that are seen, but upon the things that are not seen. 